Alright, what is it up everybody? So in this video I'm going to be showing you the best way to set up OBS for a single PC streaming setup. Now, this is going to go very basic. I'm not going to go into any of the advanced settings that could help or could not help. So if you want to look for advanced settings, you might have to find a different video or look up on OBS forums or things like that. This is just going to be a universal video for mostly everybody. And yeah, let's get right into it. So first things first, you obviously want to have the latest OBS version installed. Now Streamlabs and OBS Studio are two different programs. Streamlabs is oriented towards streamers and has a lot of the plugins already there within Streamlabs, but it does have a performance loss compared to OBS Studio. Now OBS Studio is slightly better in terms of performance and just has less plugins that you don't actually need. So I'm going to be setting up OBS Studio in this video, but Streamlabs should be around the same thing. All right. So so let's get right into it. So you want to go to settings in your OBS and then all right, and then you want to head over to stream. Make sure you connect your account or use a stream key. And then so once you've connected your account or set up your stream key, you want to make sure you select a server. Now, the easiest way to find out which server is the best for you is obviously the one that's closest to you. And that's going to be Dallas or Houston for me. But if for, for whatever reason, you're not able to actually find out what it is or it's just really troubling to find it. There is a program called Twitch Bandwidth Tester, which tests servers based on the region. And all you have to do is just put in your stream key. So I'll be showing you guys how to use this. So I'll be leaving a link to this actually in the description. All you have to do is just open it and download it. So you want to put in your stream key and you'll find this either from YouTube or Twitch in the settings. But I think this is mostly for Twitch. So I don't know about YouTube, but stream key, just plug it in there and TCP window size just sets to automatic OBS and then test duration longer will provide more accurate results. But for now, we're just going to do short and in the quick select, you want to make sure you pick your region. So for me, that's going to be North America. And then you just want to click start at the bottom left right here and it's going to test each server that with the bandwidth and the rtt which is latency and this is there is quality as well so we're going to pick the best one with the best quality and obviously the highest bandwidth so as you guys can see i actually have the lowest latency on the houston texas server rather than the dallas server which i did not know before using this tool so you want to pick the one with the most bandwidth and the least rtt and also a quality that is the highest. So for me, that's going to be Houston. And that's just because the quality, honestly, is kind of similar to all of those servers. And that's just because I literally have two upload speed and it's not good whatsoever for streaming. But yeah. So once you figured out which server, you obviously want to go back to OBS and make sure you select it and then press apply on the bottom right. Then we're going to head over to output and this is where all the magic happens. So for you, it's going to look something like this simple. You want to go to output mode and select advanced and then click streaming and then encoder. Make sure you pick NVENC. If you pick X264, it's going to use more of your CPU because it's literally using your CPU to encode the stream rather than your NVIDIA GPU, which is a lot more efficient and is a lot better performance. So if you don't have NVENC and if you're on AMD or any other GPU, sadly, those are going to be underperforming compared to NVENC. That's the main reason why a lot of people recommend NVIDIA GPUs is because their encoder is far more developed compared to AMD. So if you have an AMD card, I test between X264 and the actual AMD hardware encoder. But for most of you, if you're on NVIDIA, make sure to pick NVENC H264. And if you have like a Ryzen 9 or just a CPU with a lot of cores, X264 might be good for you. But I'd only really default back to that if you don't have NVENC. But if you're able to get NVENC, if you're able to upgrade your card to NVIDIA, I'd highly recommend you do that. It's just better for a lot of games and for encoding. So yeah, make sure you pick NVENC and yeah. So rescale output, this is where you can actually rescale your output to 720 if you have really bad internet and you can't have a decent bit rate with native resolution. So I just change it in here and a lot of people change it in video. That's, I do not recommend that. You just wanna click rescale output here and actually change it in here. And then you could press apply on the bottom right. And now encoder settings, 
leave this relatively default but bitrate is usually the only thing you want to change and the only reason why you want to change bitrate is because it depends on your upload speed now higher bitrate is obviously smoother video and better quality but it's going to take more of your upload bandwidth so in order to find out how much upload speed you can allocate to obs for streaming all you want to do is head over to speed test and run a speed test and see what your upload is like. So the tool that I actually mentioned earlier, Twitch Bandwidth Tester does show you the bit rate, which you could use to also set your bit rate with that tool. So for me, uh, as you can see, I'm getting about two upload speed, which isn't really good. So I don't really have a lot of room to play with with the bit rate. So, but if you're getting about 10 upload speed, I'd recommend setting about 6,000 bit rate for Twitch. But if you're on YouTube, you could probably up it to 7,500, but you want to play around with this because you need to leave enough upload for gaming and other things. But for me, I'm just going to do about 80% of my upload. So theoretically, we're going to say I have 20 upload and I'm going to say I'm going to be using about 10,000 of that upload. So that's going to be my bit rate, 10,000. Now, obviously, different streaming services are going to have different requirements for bitrate and different limits and you want to just want to set it if you have really good upload speed like in the hundreds or above then you can set it to the max bitrate depending on what streaming service you have so for twitch i believe it's 6000 but i'm not really sure you can set it to 6000 if you have really good upload speed otherwise leave everything else relatively the same there isn't really much performance out of changing these unless you want to test all of them and figure it out for yourself a lot of the streaming settings require testing and depends on your pc so yeah now i'm be covering the encoder x264 just for the people that actually require to use this and basically rescaling the output to lower resolution is going to help with x264 because it's less strain on the cpu and the higher the bit rate uh, again it's the same thing with the mvenc it's going to be more resources allocated to support that bit rate so set that depending on what your upload speed is, which we just mentioned earlier, should be around 80 to 75% of what your upload actually is, or depends on what streaming services you're using. Now, CPU usage, I'd leave this on very fast. So everything up under very fast is going to lower quality, but it's going to use less CPU. And now that's helpful if you're on a really bad CPU and you just want a more performance for gaming and your viewers don't really care about how the stream looks. But for probably most of us, we want our stream to look at least viewable so we'd want to set it to better quality so default is perfectly fine you could try faster or fast but anything above that there's very minimal differences in quality and it's just going to use more cpu and you're just going to have worse performance while gaming so that's for x264 now i'm going to leave it on and because that's what i want to be using we're going to press apply at the bottom right and then we're going to head over to audio and audio you just want to make sure your desktop is selected and your mic and then just press apply and then you want to go to video and make sure these two resolutions are the same common fps values obviously lower is better for streaming latency and for less strain on the encoder and better performance while gaming so i test around with this some of you might be able to do 60 some of you might be able to only do 30 i feel like a lot of people would benefit from just setting it to 30 so i'm gonna be setting it to 30 and i'm gonna press apply all right now we're gonna head over to advanced and then we just want to make sure that enable browser hardware acceleration is unchecked and that's just gonna use less resources for hardware acceleration now you can press ok here and as long as you have your sources correctly aka your game capture is actually capturing your game or your display capture is capturing your display and just a side note you want to be using game capture if you're streaming a game you do not want to be using display anyways once you you have it set up all you have to do is right click on the preview and actually disabling the preview does help tremendously with latency and mouse feel in the game so if you want the best performance while also streaming then also disable the preview now on Streamlabs OBS, right clicking on the preview lets you choose performance mode. You want to check that. That's very important and helps a lot. Now, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If this helped, comment down below. And if you don't have an NVENC encoder, sadly, it's just going to be a little bit harder for your stream on a single PC setup. But you can always try using the X264, even though it's going to use more of your CPU. But if you have a really high core CPU, it should be less of a problem. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And I hope to see you guys in in the next one. See ya.